payments. Uh, I'm studying for my physiology quiz, but I have no idea what the pathophysiology of asthma is. It's so confusing. Yeah, that stuff is really confusing. Yeah. Maybe I'll help you study. So first, before we can talk about the pathophysiology of asthma, we need to know about the physiology of the respiratory system and how it helps the body to maintain homeostasis. I know all about this already. In someone with normal lung function, air is inhaled through the mouth and nose, then travels through the trachea into bronchi, which are the large airways that branch into smaller and smaller tubes until they end in a small sacs called alveoli. It is here where gas exchange occurs. Oxygen is passed from the alveoli to the blood in the capillaries, while carbon dioxide is passed from the capillaries to the alveoli for removal during exhalation. And the airways are also lined with mucus, which traps foreign inhibitors, and with a layer of cells called the epithelial layer, which has hair-like cilia for brushing mucus and foreign particles out of the lungs like a conveyor belt so it can be swallowed. Right, so some of the main risk factors that can lead to asthma are Allergic smoking and exposure to secondhand smoke and exposure to pollutants, as all of these can act as triggers for asthmatic response, and asthma can also be genetically linked. If you have a parent with asthma, you are three to six times more likely to have asthma as well. See, you've got this. All right, so now we can talk about the pathophysiology of asthma. So bronchial asthma is a chronic disorder of the airways that causes episodes of airway obstruction due to bronchial smooth muscle hyperreactivity and airway inflammation and obstruction. So there are two types of asthma. Intrinsic and extrinsic asthma. Extrinsic asthma is caused by exposure to allergens and intrinsic asthma is asthma not associated with allergens. It's caused by other triggers such as cigarette smoke or exercise instead. And those triggers cause bronchi to constrict, but most people have a combination of the two. Right again. So in extrinsic asthma, when allergens enter the body, they are engulfed by dendritic cells through their cell membrane via endocytosis. The dendritic cells travel to the lymph nodes where they signal helper T cells of the invasion. Helper T cells produce chemicals called cytokines, which signal azenophils to produce inflammatory chemicals to cause bronchial constriction and stimulate the increased production of mucus, and they also stimulate plasma cells to release IgE antibodies, which are proteins, to bind to the receptor proteins on the cell membranes of mast cells. This binding stimulates the mast cells to release hormone protein called histamine. Histamine causes, one, nearby blood vessels to become more permeable, so more blood and leukocytes, including azenophils, can enter the area to fight the allergen, but also causes swelling. Two, it triggers other leukocytes to release inflammatory chemicals, furthering the inflammation of the bronchial mucosa. Three, it directly causes contraction of the smooth muscle surrounding the airways, which narrows them. And four, histamine can trigger goblet cells to produce more mucus, contributing to the narrowing of airways. Furthermore, submucosal glands found in the lining of bronchi and goblet cells found in the lining of bronchi and bronchioles produce mucus. When the airway is irritated, both will produce mucus in an attempt to rid the airway of the irritant. Mucus in the larger airways can be easily expelled by coughing, but mucus in the small airways can easily cause a blockage. Moreover, as asthma persists, the airway can become remodeled, causing more and more goblet cells to be found there, which is known as goblet cell hyperplasia. This causes excess mucus to be produced, which further blocks the airways. So, in terms of symptoms, coughing is due to the body trying to expel mucus from the lungs to return the body to homeostasis, and due to the swelling and inflammation of the airways causing the bronchial tubes to spasm. The cough is usually accompanied by a whistling, wheezing sound which is produced by air trying to force it away through the inflamed constricted airway tubes. The feeling of chest tightness is experienced as the airways become more inflamed, constricted and filled with mucus. And of course, difficulty breathing is also caused by inflammation of mucus blocking the airways and a smooth muscle constriction narrowing them. And one of the best ways to treat those symptoms is with beta-2. Short-acting beta-2 agonists are bronchial dilators that relax the smooth muscle and provide symptom relief within 30 minutes and last for 3 to 6 hours. It's usually inhaled and are recommended for alleviating asthma attacks. Long-acting beta-2 agonists are inhaled or taken orally on a daily basis to help relax bronchial smooth muscle and are used with anti-inflammatory medications to provide symptom relief for 12 to 24 hours. 
Okay, right. Thanks. I think I've got it now. Awesome. So you're going to do great on that test. Oh, thank you. Hey, Neelu. How'd you do you on the quiz? Did you make any asthma? Well, yeah. I remembered everything. And this study really helps. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. <laughs>